This is Video Interface Edition 11, the Summer Edition, and I'll be talking to Hayes about VFast Class and V34. I'll be down here in Bristol with Hewlett Packard's Computer Peripherals Division, and I'll be talking in the studio with David Godwin, General Manager of Novell UK. In the news this month, software giveaways and price reductions, changes in hardware specs, and of course, the end of the Whitbread. So, here's the stock frame index. Reset your minutes and seconds counter now. Welcome to edition 11 of Lantex Video Interface. First of all, we'd like to thank all the people who pointed out that despite our best efforts to dispatch our cassettes in an environmentally friendly box rather than a jiffy bag, our duplication and mailing company actually double packed it and sent you both. We won't embarrass them by naming them, but they have asked us to apologise on their behalf and they promise that they're going to get it right this time. Doubtless you'll soon let us know if they don't. As we were recording edition 9 of Video Interface, the news broke of Novell buying WordPerfect. You may remember, at the time we spoke to Ben Smith, area manager for Novell Europe, the Middle East and Africa. Since then, the buyout has been approved by the American government and the deal is done. This has been, of course, the biggest software company merger ever. And thus, we are delighted to have with us in the studio today, David Godwin, who you may remember appeared in edition 1 of Video Interface as general manager of WordPerfect UK. David is now Managing Director of Novell UK. With us also is Graham Allen, who is Brand Marketing Director at Novell. Welcome, gentlemen. Good morning, Steve. Nice to be here. David, let me ask you first. The software industry doesn't have a terribly good reputation of putting companies together. Are Novell getting it right? I'm bound to say yes, and we're here to prove them wrong. I think um, one of the objectives out of the two companies coming together is to deliver rapid customer benefits. We're well aware of the fact that history shows us that uh, previous mergers from, by other companies, of other companies, have been not as successful as they would have liked. Um, we're fortunate to have a new CEO and president in, in the shape of Bob Frankenberg. And Bob has a wealth of experience in terms of bringing major organizations together. Uh, from that point of view, we feel well placed to, to take advantage of the good set skill sets that exist within Novell and WordPerfect. And um, we're well positioned to do that. Graham, the, the two companies have a very different uh, sort of ethos, certainly in marketing terms. Uh, Novell has traditionally been a company of partnerships and, and so on, whereas WordPerfect is very pushy on the marketing side, very active. What's going to be the stance of the new combined group on that score? Well, w you could look at it two ways. You could either say it's going to be a clash of cultures, or you could say it's really going to be an ideal marriage of cultures. And certainly, uh, my belief is that we will marry the marketing cultures and blend them to get an aggregate that's better than the sum of the two. Uh, certainly, um, because of the nature of our technology, Novell's a, a networking technology, we've been a very pragmatic and perhaps conservative in the marketing stance. And like you say, we're perfect, are obviously much more visible, higher profile. And I think as the new products uh, appear, we will take the best of uh, the marketing capabilities, the best of the skills, expertise, the channels used, and, and then move those products uh, out into the market in the best way that's appropriate for each of the product sets. But certainly, we, we are looking to get the best of both those cultures. Mm. David, um, there have been some fairly stunning predictions already from the combined group. Uh, a couple of months ago, you mentioned that uh, Novell will be developing a head-to-head -head competitor for Lotus Notes. Are you in a position to tell us any more about that now? Um, I'm not in a position to tell you the detail of that particular product, but I think I, I would like to expand and talk a little more about uh, one of the major reasons for the two companies coming together mm -hmm. was to address the workgroup computing arena. Uh, I think the final deal went through at about $800 million, which is, if you think about it, an awful lot of money to pay for a word processor. And if that's what <laughs> WordPerfect sure is all is. about, the fact is there's a lot more behind the scenes to WordPerfect than we've really uh, been able to communicate. And some of that technology is really powerful workgroup technology uh, in the form of uh, WordPerfect GroupWise, formerly WordPerfect Office. That's a messaging product. I think also WordPerfect informs the beginnings of workflow technology and WordPerfect soft solutions, the document management technology. So as we define workgroup computing, those are three key areas. And a fourth key area is the broader category of information sharing, which is really the area that Notes addresses currently. Um, so we're addressing a broad proportion of the, the, the workgroup computing arena, and we will fill out that fourth category. Uh, over time, and that'll be technologies that comes from WordPerfect and Novell as we move forward. Mm. You're clearly of the opinion there was a, a great synergy 
between the two. That was the reason, was it then, for, for the two companies coming together, really? Absolutely. I think over the past two years, we've been fellow travelers almost, heading down a similar route, but uh, doing it independently. And many of our customers were driving forward and saying, Novell, what are you doing to help facilitate the growth and the explosion of network applications? And when we say network applications, I mean applications that take advantage of the new and emerging network services, not just the traditional file and print, but start to take the advantage of services, multimedia services, directory services, software distribution, telephony. These are services that Novell has been developing and is ready now in many cases. And what Perfect's point of view, customers are saying, what are you doing to get your, your applications to take advantage of the network? So we were both heading down that route independently. Together as one organization, we're going to be able to accelerate the process and provide true network applications that uh, go beyond the very desktop-centric world that people have been used to and start to deliver applications that people are, around the organization are able to share. I think also I want to add that there's, there's been a degree of speculation about Novell and WordPerfect. Is this an exclusive relationship? Are, are these two organizations now going to deliver solutions only for each other? And the, the straight answer to that is no. Um, Novell's approach over the years has been very, one, very much one of partnership and openness. And we're perfect to an extent as well. We'll actually further enhance that openness and partnership as we move forward with our network applications and our groupware applications as well. So we'll be very open to the market. Right. Graham, as, the, as originally a Novell person, let me ask you, has this taken Novell's eye off the networking ball at all? Or tell us the future for network and products like that? Not, not at all. Um, I th if we looked at the, the traditional market, our, our most successful market, network operating systems, uh, that's been maturing very strongly over the last two or three years. Uh, we re retain a very significant market position there. Uh, but as, as David pointed out, the future was not in making the network operating system a better and better operating system. The future definitely is in the network services that the network operating system provides, such as telephony and video and directory and some of these new services. And much more importantly, as David points out, the integration to the, the network applications that need to happen and are happening as, re as a result of this merger. So we haven't taken our eye off the ball at all. Our, our eye was very firmly on where do we go with networking in the future. And network applications and the use of future network services is where networking is going. So uh, we're very much moving in that direction now. Right. David, let me tackle you about Main Street. Main Street is a very consumer oriented product. Does that really fit in with a very high-end uh, Novell networking products in the same company? Um, I think one of the advantages we now have as part of the greater Novell is that we are a full software supplier. We're able to satisfy demands right through from the home and small business through the large enterprise corporate customer. And that's a big benefit to us. Um, the Main Street range of software, which is really geared at our smaller consumers, uh, fits nicely within the overall framework um, it is a separate business division with its own separate P&L responsibilities. Um, but even so, there are compatibilities that exist between the software we provide for the home and small business in Main Street and the large enterprise customer. An example might be uh, Info Central, our personal information manager, that will have compatible calendars and be part of our future suite, Perfect Office, uh, and will be compatible with WordPerfect GroupWise calendar. So when you're mobile, those things are still compatible. So they fit well. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a separate business unit that has a job to do. Mm. You, you mentioned Perfect Office there. Could you give us a, an explanation of the difference between Perfect Office standard, professional, and select? Because I don't understand it, and I'm sure there are a lot of other people who don't either. Absolutely. Of course, it's fairly new. Um, and you've described the three varieties of suite that we will deliver in Q4 this year. Uh, the standard edition will include WordPerfect. Quattro Pro, of course, acquired as part of the merger and acquisition process that Novell have gone through. Um, it will also include uh, Info Central, Envoy, uh, which is a portable document format tool, and of course WordPerfect GroupWise as well. And that's just the standard edition. Right. Uh, the professional edition will build onto that a paradox and a visual app builder, a uh, uh, very graphical, rapid, easy to use development environment. And then perhaps most exciting is the um, select edition of Perfect Office. And here, we will put uh, many of our applications on the CD. Many of our Main Street applications will be available on the CD. Many of our professional applications will be available on a CD. And customers will be able to pick and mix and select their own suite. 
Not only that, if they are perhaps standardized on Lotus 1, 2, 3 as their spreadsheet, developed a great deal of macro technology in that. Um, but see WordPerfect and GroupWise and other applications from Novell as critical to their organization. They can plug in and have as a, as a native part of their suite uh, Lotus 1, 2, 3 and still have all the same integration capabilities as if they were using Quattro Pro and that's a technology called Perfect Links. So the CD is all about providing uh, value for money in the suite environment as well. So it's a critical area of the market for us to address. I think that explanation is useful. Graham, what about certification and, and accreditation? We actually talked about this on the, on the last video. Novell have Systems House and CNE, uh, we're perfect, have certified partners and so forth. Is this all going to come together as well? Uh, Novell, Novell we're perfect now. In the UK, uh, very shortly we'll be announcing a full range of, of programs and, and accreditation uh, for partners, including systems houses, including consultants, and including developers. And we will look to see how we, if you like, bring together uh, the two uh, diverse uh, programs that exist today uh, and make sure that partners are, are looked after and protected in that so that we, we can get the benefit of their expertise to the end user customer. Mm. Okay, David, final question from you. We're seeing some, some fantastic new products. Are these really a result of the merger, or would they have happened anyway, some of them in Novell and some of them in WordPerfect? Um, they may have happened, but they would probably would have taken a lot longer to come to reality. Uh, the merger, I think, was announced back in March 27th. Um, in that very short space of time, a good example of what we've been able to achieve is in the Perfect Office suite, for example, where we've taken technologies from Borland in the form of Quattro Pro, from Novell in the form of Visual App Builder, and from WordPerfect in a number of applications to provide a suite that looks and feels and is from one organization in terms of interface similarity and all these other things. So in a very rapid space of time, we're really delivering customer benefit from the three parties that were involved in the merger process. And we'll build on that. And as I said, that'll address further group or applications, network applications, network services. The opportunities are endless. And uh, we were out there to basically prove that this type of merger can work and will work, and customers will feel the benefit of it. Well, it looks like it's working very well. Thank you both for joining us here today. Thanks very much. Well, if the concept of making your own suite interests you, we're about to see it done. Introduce to you now Tunji Akintoken, one of Lantec's senior technical staff, who's with Daniel Sumner of Novell WordPerfect. There are a number of high-level languages that make it easy to build simple GUI applications, but Novell's new visual app builder is claimed to be a fifth-generation language. Many corporates would like to customize their GUI applications, but this has traditionally been limited to writing macros, often in application-specific languages. Daniel, does Novell's App Builder overcome these limitations? Yes, it does, and it certainly does a lot more than that as well. As you heard earlier, Visual App Builder will be formed part of Perfect Office 3.0. More importantly, our professional edition of the suite will include Visual App Builder for Windows. And okay. you can see some of the components of the suite actually in this program group I have up on the screen. Right. But we're going to go straight into Visual App Builder. And we're actually going to create a custom application. On screen right at the moment, we're actually in the process of actually building an application from scratch. It's a, it's a .ini editor, OK? okay. I'm sure you're familiar with doing that, of editing a win.ini file or a system.ini file. Mm. Well, this is an application that we're actually going to create by using Visual App Builder. Now, as you rightly said, it's a fifth GL, a fifth generation language. Okay, and for those of us who missed generations one to four, <laughs> that essentially means that we don't have to write any lines of code. It doesn't have to right. be in COBOL or in C or in BASIC or whatever it may be. We literally draw our application on screen using objects, and we connect them together by drawing lines. Okay. Okay, so in this application, there I have a, a window, of course, as we start up the application, a text window to actually edit our text in the ini file, the menu bar with a file pull-down menu, which has open, save, and quit on it, an edit pull-down menu, which has cut, copy, and paste on it, and also an about pull-down menu, which also has an about um, menu item on it as well. Okay. So if you want to know about the application, we place it onto there. Right. Okay. You can see how simple these dialog boxes are actually linked together. So literally, for the open dialog box, I actually have an object connected to the, ob to the open function there. Okay. okay. And I want you to remember that. It's just literally just one little um, icon on there representing a complete dialog box. I'm just going to finish off this application now by actually adding the About dialog box. Okay. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take the object from down here, from this Object and Function palette. 
you think of objects rather objects and functions rather like nouns and verbs as it were. Mm. one represents an item right. one is an actual doing action as it were indeed okay so I'm just going to add a dialog box so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to select this dialog box here I'm going to just drag and drop it literally onto this editing screen and there's my dialog box and I need, need to connect it to that menu item now so I just again just click and drag connect the two together there oh you can right, see an okay. arrow just appear and I can just move around the screen as I wish I can just clear it up a little bit there I'm just going to type in the title of this dialog box so this is the uh, dot in the editor oops it's been a little typing state let's just do so dot any editor we've actually got placed into here and the in the about dialog box or what the actual text of the dialog box is yeah. let's say this is the land tech in the editor so we'll just click OK I'm just going to type in a dialog box style number you want mm. a style number to represent the type of dialog box you're working with whether it be an OK dialog box or okay. an OK and cancel dialog box for example so 512 is just the just the code for that OK, okay. So if I just go to project right now, I can um, debug this application. I can create a standalone EXE file, so you can just run it as a standalone application. Mm -hmm. I can even create an icon to represent my application if it is standalone. But what I'm going to do right now is run that application. So I'll take the option to run. I'm not going to save it. You can see it compiling there on screen. And up on screen right now will come our any editor. And there's the one we've just created. You can see it displayed on screen. Oh, great. Now, if I go to the file pull down menu and just take that open um, menu item up because the open dialog box from that one little icon we placed on the desktop there, you see we've actually brought up a very comprehensive dialog box. Mm. And in fact, <coughs> that dialog box comes from WordPerfect 6.0 for Windows. It's one of the components of that application. And you can see it has full right mouse button support, for example. OK, so that's actually from WordPerfect 6. W what other features can I use from any of the other suite well, of applications? Well, so many others you can access. Because what we're actually doing is taking our shared code, or by, and by using something called Perfect Fit technology, breaking down our shared code into ALMs, AppWare Loadable Modules, that will allow customers to actually break down and use components of our software in custom applications they write. Hi. Let's start with news from Computer Associates, which includes a couple of items of interest to corporates. CA Realia 2 is a new PC-based GUI solution for downsizing applications and offloading the development and maintenance of legacy mainframe COBOL systems. And CA Super Project is now available in both Windows and OS2 versions. From now on, when you buy the Windows version, you receive an OS2 version as well. As an added bonus, Timesheet Professional for Windows is also included. A few brief items. DataEase Express for Windows is reduced in price to 275 to bring it into line with street pricing, say DataEase. PageMaker 5 for the Power Macintosh is now shipping at a suggested retail price of 695 And a reminder that WordPerfect's 3 for the price of 2 offer closes at the end of August. Until then, buying 2 of any full product pack or any multiple license pack of WordPerfect for Windows brings you a license for the same number again free of charge. For example, buy two shrink-wrapped copies and get a license to use the software on a third system free. On the hardware side, IBM have revamped the disk drives in their value point systems, generally giving greater disk capacity for the same or a lower price point. Toshiba have announced price drops in a selected range of notebooks. The entry-level T1900S, a 486-25SX mono model, is now available for less than £1,000. The retail prices of the TFT T1950s are also reduced by £300. Compaq also announced price drops on their desktop XE range, making them an even better value business machine. In addition, there are upgrades to Smart Start, Compaq's intelligent way to purchase, install, configure and optimise system software on a Compaq server. New items in the August edition will include OS2 version 2.11 and LAN server, and also ArcServe and Legato tape backup software. There are upgrades to AllSCO software and Netware will be version 4.02. We will be reviewing some exciting new server announcements from Compaq in the next edition of Video Interface. It's interesting to see the big software companies all discovering the home PC market. It would appear that some critical mass of PCs in the home has now been reached. Following hard on the heels of WordPerfect's Main Street range, Claris have just introduced a group of products known collectively as Claris Clear Choice. Prices range from £19.95 to £49. 
The five products in the launch range are Retrieve It, Power To Go, Brush Strokes, Imaginaria and From Alice To Ocean. Doubtless we'll be seeing them on the shelves in our high streets soon. In case you haven't heard, a Novell press statement of the 15th of July announced the death of Greg Fallon, Vice President for Novell, Europe, Middle East and Africa. Greg was 43 and died of heart failure whilst in London. Those of you who attended our two-day technology conference in 1992 will remember Greg's witty and knowledgeable presentation. We at Lantec and many others in the computer industry looked upon Greg as a friend and will miss him. And finally, we bring you our last Whitbread Round the World Yacht Race report. Regular viewers will know that about 10 months ago, Lantec were asked to donate and install the networking components of the Whitbread Race Organisers Communications Network. Naturally, we started to take an interest in the race, and we've been following its progress, and especially that of Toshiba-sponsored Tokyo, a Whitbread 60-class boat. Sadly, our favourite lost her mast during leg five of the race, which put her out of the running for the final winning place. However, once repaired, Tokyo acquitted herself well powering over the line at 23 knots to win the final leg of the 32,000 mile event. After racing for nine months in the most challenging conditions to be found on the planet, the maxi-class New Zealand Endeavour finished an overall winner in that class. Plans are already in hand for the next race which will start in the autumn of 1997. It will be a one-class race for Whitbread 60s and many of this year's crews and skippers will be back again to do battle with the world's oceans in the ultimate challenge of man against nature. Just what the communications technology will be by that time is difficult to predict, but perhaps we'll have real-time TV pictures from all the boats all the time, and maybe even a dedicated data superhighway channel to watch it on. As for Lantec, we would be pleased to play our part again and keep the organisers in touch wherever they happen to be on the world's surface. We look forward to bringing you news of the start in Lantec's Video Interface Edition 30. And that's Lantec's industry update for August 1994. Only a couple of months ago, we featured this piece in Video Interface 9. Hayes have announced a modem that transfers more than a megabyte a minute over a dial-up phone line. The Hayes Optima 288 VFC Plus Fax, don't you love those snappy product names, is a powerful solution for remote node access to a LAN, transferring large data files or multimedia. Transmitting 230k bits per second using data compression, it implements a VFast class or VFC technology jointly developed by Hayes and Rockwell. Such is the progress in the computer industry that some fear this announcement may already be out of date. Communications is an area of major concern to corporate IT people, and we're already hearing about V34 standard. So what exactly is happening? To answer that question, we have with us Jeremy Butt from Hayes Microcomputer Products. He's the European Sales Director. Jeremy, welcome. Michael, thanks for asking me along. Hopefully we can straighten out one or two of the popular questions at the moment. I'm sure we can. Jeremy, first of all, is the fast class now defunct? Absolutely not. Hayes have worked with Rockwell for quite some period of time developing this as a good solution. Hayes and many others are continuing to release VFast class products and with the Hayes reputation there is no way that we'll leave our customers in the lurch. Okay, so has V34 now been ratified? V34 has not actually been ratified. We expect the official ratification around about the September time frame. Mm -hmm. So you could expect to have tested product in the marketplace not until the October and November time frame because you need testing with other vendors. Right. And then V34 and VFast class will be compatible, will they? No. Pure VFast class and pure V34 are not compatible. But many organizations, including our own, are releasing products that are V34 and VFast class in mm -hmm. standard. All right. OK. So in the meantime, in the interim, what should our customers been buying? I don't think interim is quite the right phrase for it. Customers have been purchasing VFC products, nearly a million worldwide now, by the way, mm -hmm. to deal with um, a solution need they have for the day. They need high-speed communications. We're producing high-speed communication products today. When they buy V34 in the October-November time frame, they won't get anything faster. 
So they can continue to purchase VFC today, um, and they continue to purchase VFC, frankly, after B34, if it's just a speed issue they're concerned with. Right. So there are strong reasons for staying with VFast class, but when V34 has been ratified and is established, will there be an upgrade path from VFast class to V34? Yes, there will absolutely be an upgrade path, um, and Hayes will take care of the upgrade for our customers. We want the products back to upgrade it and test it. We will not be doing field upgrades. Mm -hmm. Frankly, we're not even certain about the legalities of being allowed to do that. Right. And morally, I don't think you can stick it on your customers and expect them to do their own upgrade and testing. BMW wouldn't send you some uh, brake upgrades, would they, and expect <laughs> you to do it yourself? Right. Okay. But you've got this commitment to VFast class, and you've demonstrated that through the Millennium 8000 network system products. Tell us about some of those. That's continuing, is it? That's right. I mean, the Millennium 8000 network system was designed in the first place to be upgradable whenever we bring out new products. And we have just done that. We announced a couple of weeks ago in the US the 288 quad card. That is one card which contains four VFast class devices. Mm -hmm. So we continue to bring out products for the Millennium 8000 system. All right. Some of our customers are talking about and indeed already beginning to use ISDN. Do Hayes have products in that market sector too? Yes, it has. We, for the last four months or so, have been evaluating at beta sites throughout the UK the Hayes Ultra ISDN 64K system adapter. And if you can say that twice, <laughs> all right, and get it right, you're a better man than I am. It's gone superbly well, and we're just about to make the product available in the channel today. So it's available for purchase at £799. All right. Enough about Hayes current products. The future now. Uh, let's broaden out the information superhighway. We've heard quite a lot about that on video interface through Dave House and John Landry, to name but two. What's Hayes' view about the information superhighway? I don't think you can move anywhere at the moment without hearing about the information superhighway. I'm not certain how many people understand what it is, if any, at the moment. Um, Hayes, we are the standard setter in many areas of communications, and I guess the viewpoint of Dennis Hayes, the founder of the company, is that you have to view Hayes as being the on-ramp to the information superhighway. I like that. I thought you might. OK, well, let's leave it there, and thanks very much indeed, Jeremy. Thank you. What would you say is the most valuable capital asset that your company owns? Depending upon what business you're in, you might say a motor vehicle fleet, or perhaps buildings, or maybe plant and machinery. But I wonder how close to the top of that list you would place computer stored data.